hello welcome back i hope we are well today i am going to be doing another feelings and faves it's that time of the month admittedly i've not done one of these in a while but i'm here to catch up all right so it's coming to the end of july <laughs> like five months until december which freaks me out ever so slightly because it means we're over halfway through the year and um soon it'll be 2023 it's been a it's been a really busy but exciting time june was like chock-a-block ramo 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 well, i went for had a really busy spell hendu download fest music video and um, i've been working on loads of stuff of the shop july has been sort of similar visiting loads of friends we went to a wedding last weekend we're going to a wedding this weekend doing lots of lovely things with pals basically it's like the first year where in a while where i feel like we can just go out and do things uncompromised and be fully social and immersive in the world and i'm so happy about it just life feels like it's back to normal and it's fantastic and i love it i've been watching loads of tv loads of movies i'm super excited because sky movies has now launched paramount plus which is an added extra into sky basically they've just added a ton more movies we've got things like we've well, got my favorites got no country for old men's on there which is i've watched that film like a hundred times i wrote about it in my dissertation when i was at film school actually about the sound design and how there's no music in it there's only one song which is a mariachi band um, and the rest of it has no music and i wrote uh, my dissertation on how like anxiety and um suspense is created through like lack of sound cues you know when something bad in a movie is about to happen and you're like you're expecting something where where, where is this you just don't know so you're you're always on the edge of your seat thinking the worst is going to happen which i kind of like i like it when a movie makes you feel a little bit like Ooh! jurassic park that's a classic watched that the other day wayne's world school of rock Grease, like a list of list of such amazing movies then we've got like brand new films on there like spider-man no way home mission impossible the adams family like the list goes on halo the first lady that's on sky cinema which if you didn't know i was an ambassador for so i'll keep you updated on all the movie launches and any good things that i watch on there so we've been we've been looking at that i think it's just great that it's included so it's the gift that keeps on giving i've also become completely obsessed with parks and rec i feel like i really relate to leslie nope i feel like i am leslie nope and a mixture of ron swanson but i'm completely <laughs> like obsessed with that show i watched top gun for the first time which was an absolute masterpiece i've been back in gardening mode the the heat has made my garden come to life but because the majority of my plants are like mm. tropical or like rainforesty they require so much watering so i've been spending a lot of my time watering plants which has been quite nice and relaxing and a nice way to actually wind down on an evening it's just getting the hose out lola stop growling you stupid dig i love a bit of vitamin d and the garden office is back in swing because you know i've been making attempts to not work on, on the sofa or like around the house with my laptop because i find that kind of working from home can sometimes be quite hard because there's sort of no boundary there between work and home life and unwinding can be quite difficult um so i don't know i just feel like being in the garden is quite it's quite nice um i have been considering potentially potentially renting an office like in Norwich somewhere where I can like run all the bits that I do from there because I've been working from home for well since forever like since I started YouTube so 2013 2014 or 2014 2015 I have I've been like ha had an office in the house and it's nice I like the flexibility and then everybody's been working from home at some point but I've come to really realize that I think I work better when I'm like out and about like if I go work in a coffee shop or if I'm on a train or if I'm in, even if in like a hotel room when I'm not at home it feels like I can really focus on it so I've been really considering that recently so watch this space I might open a little office somewhere who knows but I'm just been looking around at the minute I don't, I don't know whether it's going to be viable just yet or if I could get someone to like desk share with me or like open up like a little creative space where people can come in and work 
they have their own little area. I don't know. Um, all these things I'm considering. Band stuff been really, really awesome. We had our first headline show in Norwich the other day at Voodoo Daddy's to celebrate our EP launch, which is coming out the first week of August. My new single, I Don't Love You Like I Used To, it, the video for that is going to be launched this Thursday. Actually, should be live right now. So go check, go check that out uh, after you've watched this video because that was an absolute hoot to film and that's what I was filming down in Margate. So sorry, yeah, it's just as we, I'm pre-filming this. So I'm just trying to figure out when, when this is actually live. So yeah, it'll be live now. <laughs> that's really exciting. But generally, yeah, I've been good. I've been working really hard on the shop stuff, trying to design, designing new products. Um, I signed up for a pop-up market, so I will be participating in Fierce Babes Market in Norwich, which is on the 28th of August, which is a Sunday. 28th, is it 28th? The weekend of the 28th of August, which is a Sunday, at a place called the Assembly House. And it's just a load of independent creators sharing their wares and creations. And I'm going to have a table there, and I'm so excited. So I've been sort of prepping for that, thinking about that, making new products trying to always better myself and think of the future um but it's been going it's been like plodding along really nicely and i feel like it's in a good place and i'm very happy about it so dreams do come true guys dreams do come true and i've got lots of big future aspirations people are like oh can you bring out your own clothing line and I'm like in good time in good time i want to do other stuff like design bags design sunglasses like a load of stuff i want to really expand my product but that takes time and money and space and because it's just me doing it all um i need to make sure that i'm you know able to do that and have the capacity to do that so we'll see what the future holds i have had some like downtime like weeks where i haven't been feeling so great um but i mean i feel better in myself that i can understand why and not always why but accepting that oh i'm feeling a bit meh today or my energy levels are quite low i'm not feeling particularly hey i'm helen anderson Whoa! understanding like what kind of work i achieve depending on how i'm feeling at the time which i know is a massive luxury i acknowledge that i'm very fortunate that i can have a bit more control over my work time and working hours that's why I think I think one of the mega perks of being self-employed is is that because you're your own boss, you don't have to call in sick. You can be like, you know what? I'm feeling a bit bleh today, so I'm going to do work that I can manage whilst feeling bleh, where it's like admin, sit down stuff. We'll just take it a bit easier. And I'm understanding also like my le energy levels really do fluctuate and then drop. I know that that's all part of also having ADHD and I'm understanding that so much better these days. I went to a little, com not conference, like a little like a little intro to it, like a seminar, I suppose. I took mum and Phil with me so they could come and um, get to know the, the whys and hows and the all, like the an intro to what actually is ADHD. So like the most important people around me can understand it and understand me a bit better. And with that, I am understanding myself better. So rather than feeling, oh, I feel bad today. Why do I feel bad? I should feel better. Let's try and do things to make me feel better. Sometimes, sometimes there are, you just got to allow yourself that time to feel the way that you feel. And not everything needs a solution or a resolution or something to happen to make you feel better. Sometimes it's just about riding the wave. Whereas before I would feel guilty and spiral about feeling bad or sad. Like, why do I feel sad? Where? It'd be like, oh, I feel a bit shit today. That's all right. What should we do so it's not too taxing or too much strain or pressure? So that's made a massive change to like my mental well-being. Take that if you can and apply it to yourself wherever you can. Is just don't put too much pressure on yourself. Allow yourself to feel and try and adapt like your day to day to match your energy levels and what you're capable of. Because another example is when I'm feeling really high energy and really like, yeah, I get so much done. And then some days where I feel like really blare and don't get so much done, it's all right because it all eventually levels out. And I wish that I could have that consistency and I wish I could have that balance and that constant like stream of energy, but I just can't because that's who I am as a person. So really, really clutch on and appreciate the highs and then go easy on myself when I'm feeling a bit low. Generally speaking though, been been good times and I feel like 
I'm kind of thriving in a way. Am I allowed to say that about myself? But I'm gonna say it, because I'm proud of myself. So that's kind of like what I've been doing and how I've been feeling. Um, so let's move on to some favorite things. So I'm gonna start with my jewelry because I, I guess I have had a little bit of a treat yourself uh, month, not on purpose just because a couple of things were like, because of like particular drops, which I'm about to drop, like product drops, which I'm about to go into. And some things have just, I've just like seen and like, I need that now before it sells out. The first couple of things, we'll just do a little zoomy in here. Um, I've got some new jewelry. So, okay, this H isn't new, but I've put it on a chain, a short, short chain. This is my great frog H, but I bought, oh, it's hiding. There's a shop called Gypsy Silver which I found on Instagram. And that is the type of shop where she creates stuff for like product drops. So she makes a load of things, then do a countdown for the website to be launched and you like got to put it in your diary, put a timer on and then you can go shop it. So I'd missed like the last few and was gutted. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go in. I'm going to buy the stuff that I want to buy because I've been waiting so long for this. So the first one is this gorgeous horseshoe necklace. They're really chunky and weighty all made from silver it's got like her like branding on there um which is absolutely gorgeous and then the the next thing that i got was this i've called it my dragon tooth it's not a dragon tooth if someone wants to tell me in the comments what kind of stone this is i clearly need a lesson in stones <laughs> but it's cool it's like an amber stone with bits of white going through it and then it's on like this horn and again it's got all this detailing on it and it's all been handmade and it's all so, so gorgeous. And uh, the other thing that I bought from the shop is this snake ring. Oh, I've been wanting one of these for so long, but so, so nice. All my other rings are great frog. And then the other thing that I got, this is actually gifted, this ring from Pretty Ugly. And she makes like loads of cool rings. And then these plectrum necklaces, which you can have like songs put in it. But I got this ring, which is based off a love heart suite but it's, I put it's okay in it. It's like a reassurance ring. You know when you have a bit of a bad day or something's not going right? You know what, you need to remember that's okay. It's okay. So I got that put in a ring and I love it, it's so chunky. Also, I upgraded my ear piercings. So I recently got my, well, a couple of months ago, I got my Dave pierced. So that's already been, that was already gold. But um, I got some real jo jo gold jewelry so I got this little hoop here and this stud here, and that's on both sides um, from Goldsmiths, which is just like a jeweler, nationwide jeweler, and I bought it from there. And then I got this gold hoop and then this gold hoop and this like little opal stud from Seul Gold, Gold Seul little shop. It's cheaper than Goldsmiths. I've got a feeling that it's hollow. It's not solid gold. Hence the price mark. But the reason why I got it is because I like to just leave my jewelry in my ears. I don't like taking it out. Too lazy for that. I take my necklaces off now. I never used to do that. But it's just, they're just so big so I'm gonna have to. But I like them to be comfortable. I like them to not tarnish. I want them to not give me any sort of like itchiness because my ears can be quite sensitive. Um, just so I can keep them in. So I sort of, Sorted that out because it's been on the to-do list for a while. So I was like, okay, I'll do that. And then these little hoops are just from, these are from Ray's Jewels, which is an Etsy store. Girl from Norwich sells loads of awesome jewelry. So I got, I've had these ages. So I just wear them in my cat bums. So dead chuff, chuffed with them. Okay, so I had noticed like a little lump in my Dave piercing. Fun fact, I love to play with, fiddle with things. Um, I'm always fiddling with things. I'm always touching things. Um, that's I've learned that that is part of me having ADHD. I'm always picking my nose, picking my nose ring, not picking my nose, but I pick my nose ring all the time. People always think I'm picking my nose, but I'm not, I'm just playing with my septum, with my nose ring. Um, I'm just fiddling with stuff all the time, just because it's just what happens when you've got like lots of energy and you need to expel it, so you're always like touching and fiddling. Point is, is they say that you shouldn't touch a new piercing. I, I didn't, I, you know what, old school, they used to say, turn your piercings and twizzle them just so it doesn't get stuck. But I know now that that is not the done thing to do, but I still would go like twiddling my Dave piercing round and round and round and round. And then I'd go over to my nose and I'd go that. And it would just be a repeat cycle, like touching things. Anyway, so I got a lump on there, which I thought was a keloid. And I asked a piercer, is it a keloid? She had a look and she said, no, it's like hyper 
dermal she did say that it's a genetic thing so she said sometimes do you find yourself when you get scars that they rise rise and everything i was like oh anyway she said tea tree oil and i needed to get some tea tree oil anyway because i've got a real lovely big um we're still there it's hanging on by a thread um skin tag on my neck he's put some more in it but i've got some tea tree oil for my skin tag my gammy dave piercing and then I found out that you can use it on anything. Like, that's a bit unhappy. So I've been using it on my... I've got one foot that gets a bit sad sometimes. And I tell you what... Oh, my God. I put, put some on there, actually. My daif has cleared up. It's really shrunk. My skin tag is hanging on by a thread. And my foot sadness has also cleared up. Game changer. I'd never ever used it before. Am I late to the party? Probably the best shorts in the world. These are from Free People. You have to move your little butt, lowly bum, so I can get in. These are from Free People, and I was looking for some flippy shorts because I have a pair of flippy shorts that are like comfy shorts, you know, like with drawstring, like chalky bottom shorts. I wanted some denim ones, so I found these, and these come in a variation of different colours, like denim ones different colours. I've got them in this cream. I also have some denim ones on their way because I fell in love with these ones so much I had to buy some more. A little bit on the pricey side, they're £70, but if you are like me and really struggle with finding shorts and stuff in the summer, if you have a bigger bottom half, I mean I'm pear shaped, I have belly, I have bum, I have thigh, and I find that shorts can sometimes either be really uncomfortable or they just don't make me feel good because they don't look that great. These are amazing. They just feel so nice. They give really accentuate my shape here they're really fun they're really comfortable you don't get that like tight bulginess that you get with a lot of shorts which i'm not really a fan of honestly so so nice um i'm a size 14 to 16 on my bottom half most of them are 14 but you know how sometimes it can be sizes can be a little bit unpredictable so i got a size 31 i did buy a 30 because i do it in different sort of sizes and they did fit but I wanted them to be looser, so. But yeah, massive fan of these shorts. So I, I really have jumped on the Crocs bandwagon big time. Like I'm so on the bandwagon. So recently I got my orange ones, which are fantastic. Then they decided to bring out animal print Crocs, which if you know me by now, you will know that I'm an absolute sucker for. So these are my new Crocs, everybody. Ah! <laughs> And I've been wearing them every single day, around the house, out and about, no shame, look at them. I've even got a new jizz bit for it, jibbits, jizz, I call it jizz bits, all right, which is a bag of Cheetos, that's from Etsy, I need to put up some more of my others. I've decided my other pair are going to be more like my messy pair, and these are going to be my fancy pair of Crocs, if that even exists. Can you get a fancy pair of Crocs? Uh, yeah really happy with these crocs i bought them from crocs online store where they have a huge selection but you can also get these ones on off asos if you want uh, like next day because the crocs did take a wee bit longer because they're coming from europe uh, another shoe that i got recently are my black platform converse i had the i have these in cream which i've worn so much but now i've got these ones which are great they add a little something different to the wardrobe and selection so if i'm not wearing these I'm wearing these or the cream all the cream ones of these these are a little bit spenny they were 170 pounds when my mum found out how much they were she went what? and i was like mum stop shh that's personally like i told her off for it i've so already knows but that's one pet peeve of mine is when you buy something that you really really like and you're really happy with and then someone has to poop on your parade by going you spent how much on that i get it like people's budgets are all different but also people's preferences on where they put their money and how they spend it and what they think is important so one person might not want to spend 170 pounds on a pair of converse which is fine but don't make someone else feel bad just because they have like i just think it's a bit intrusive and a bit rude and i told mum, i told my mum this because she was like giving me the eh. and i had a few people comment on um the picture and my story being like what and i'm like yeah i did but they're different to a regular pair. Of, they're not your standard pair of Converse. I'm not trying to justify it, but like, look at the look at the detailing on it. Like, they for one, they look spectacular. But also, they're made in a different factory. They're designed differently. So you get what you pay for. 
basically. I do miss the days where you could buy Converse for like £30, £35. When I worked at Shoe, they were 30 35 and then I went up to 42 Yeah, a long time ago. They're great and they make me really happy. Another favourite of mine, these. These are my dog's harnesses, which have been a bit of a project of mine. And they get so many compliments when we go out. So I made my girls their own little biker jackets. So we'll start with, we'll start with Lola's. Um, I need to glue some of the bits back on again because ironing on, iron on isn't just, isn't enough for these two because it's quite on a curve when they're on so they do have been peeling so this fun one I need to get the old glue on it but I bought the harnesses from a shop called Pet Whores um, on their Etsy store because buying direct from the website you can't do because of delivery and then I bought some of the patches from Pet Whores and then the rest of them are from Etsy this is Lola's so Lola has um, good dog oh, she has good dog adventure dog because she loves to adventure she's got I want to break free, which is paying homage to her escaping all the time days when she was a puppy. Where there's a will, there's a way with Lola Chop. So she's also got the L for Lola. She's got Girl Gang, which they both have. Small but mighty, because she is. She's got Baller, because she is loves ball so much. And then just a few decorative ones. And they look so cute when they wear them. They, this basically goes around their neck like that. It like double backs on it like this but I might actually see if I can swap I might see if I can modify it so it's a another clip like this because this goes around the tummy or underneath them like that bit and this is just a bit difficult to get on that's my only only um criticism about the design of this but other than that it's really really cool that goes around the front there and then that's under the bottom and then it's got the lead just goes on the top so I'm going to probably modify it to make it a bit more user friendly and then Diane's because she's my naughty gal she has got a uh, puppy school dropout she's got puppy school dropout she's got foodie because she's the greediest gal in town she's got zoomies because she loves to zoom about she's got troublemaker <laughs> And then all dogs are good dogs. Please, I swear, she is a good dog. But out of the two, she is the most more mischievous one. Oh, I know you are. I love you though. You're precious to me. Yeah, but they get so many compliments when they're out and about. And I didn't do it for that. I did it because I want my dogs to look rad. We shall move on to like cosmetics. So one thing that has taken over my life, not right now, because I'm, I normally do it every Monday or Sunday night, my tan. But because I'm going to a wedding at the weekend, I'm holding off so it's fresher for the weekend. But I have been really getting into my routine, which is using my Amanda Harrington tan. I get it in natural rose because it's it, I'm more like pale pinky toned. And so it gives it a real natural look. And it comes in a few different shades, but not like medium, like medium dark. It's more like olive, honey, rose colour. Um, I've got a new bottle because I use it so much. And I have the primer to go with this. I'll link it all down in the description. Um, so I use the primer before I put this on. You get these little gloves, but you also get a body brush. So you rub it in with the gloves and then you buff it out with a brush so you get no streaks. And it is pretty faultless. It goes on so easy and it's so easy to blend in and you're streak free. So if you're like me and you're sort of new to tanning, you find it a bit daunting, you find it a little bit, it seems like too much effort, you can't be asked with all the faff. This is a really good place to go, this is a really good brand to go for because it is so easy and I feel like it requires minimal effort to do. It doesn't take that long, really, and because I've started putting it in my routine, it doesn't feel very invasive or like like I'm like super effort. So I love the Amanda Harrington stuff, so I'll link that down there. Um, okay, because it's been really baking hot, I have been a fan of minimal makeup. So today I am just wearing my La Roche-Posay tinted SPF, a bit of concealer, and then I've just got some blush on. This is my Charlotte Tilbury, which is new. Um, I've got a really nice big blush here, so I could just get my brush and just almost like colouring in where I feel it needs to look a bit browner, either to match my tan or to contour. So I've been using this one, fluffier brush for just more of an overall darker look or I'll use like a smaller more condensed brush to really get in with the contour. So I've got the Charlotte Tilbury as well. So this paired with this and then I do have a bit of highlight on and then I just do my eyes. Very minimal base, very minimal on the face so it doesn't feel like you're caked in makeup. 
These are brilliant. But my all time favorite thing at the moment to help it all stay in place and not melt off is the classic All Nighter Urban Decay setting spray alongside my nifty fan to set it in to make life a lot easier. So this combo with them two, absolute perfection for summertime makeup. So you don't feel cakey, you don't feel sweaty, you don't feel like it's sliding off your face. Perfection. My last favorite, which has taken my life by storm, is probably my chopper. So I got this off Amazon. You know like when you, sometimes when you buy stuff from Amazon, you're like, oh, this is a bit of a gimmick or, oh, I really need this thing. And then you're like, why did I buy this thing? Sometimes Amazon can like suck you up into a, into its like terrible hole. Well, uh, but this genuinely it has changed my life. Oh, okay, maybe not it's changed my life, but it has made my life a lot easier. I hate chopping things. It's just one of them things I just find boring. I don't enjoy doing it. I rush it because I don't like doing it, and then I do a shit job because I don't like doing it. So I got the chopper. So it means that when I make salads, absolute bang on when I do dinner and I want lots of vegetables, absolute bang on. It comes with a load of attachments. It comes with like a thick chopper, a tiny chopper, and then loads of other things, a spiralizer. Honestly, I'm just telling everybody in my life to get the damn chopper. And most people I know are quite um, good at chopping and don't see it as a chore, but there are a few people that don't, don't, don't like chopping and they got it and I just, I just love it. So the chopper, the chopper is a really big part of my life and Phil actually, really approves of the chopper and he really approves of how happy it makes me um, and he's been loving dinners recently because everything is so nice and textural textured and there's lots of different vegetables and we've been so our eating in the week has been really really good really clean lots of fruit lots of fiber lots of all the good stuff and i think the main thing there is the chopper gives me incentive to eat more and more veg veg and stuff Chips, you can make chips of it. I like to make like salsa, really nice salads. You can cut anything. It doesn't really like cheese that much. So yeah, that is it everybody. Those have been my favorites. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this little video, little catch up. Just write how you are, how you've been doing down in the comments and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.